I wish we could be doing trick or treat together this year, um, but because of the pestilence, we can't. So instead of chocolate this year, I'm giving you this story. This is a story of a long time ago when people knew who their witches were. In the dark of the night, they would visit them, whispering into the shutter where the witch waited. They'd tell her, because it was always her, about their private sicknesses, little worries, how much they hated their enemies, how much they wanted someone who didn't love them to love them very much. Good witches gave them advice to exercise, to wash their hands, to use the ointment she'd made or the syrup she'd boiled up. Good witches came in daylight to the sick that doctors had given up or not come at all because there was no money in the house. And good witches never had to cut their own firewood or grow their own vegetables or pay the miller for flowers because these things appeared on a good witch's doorstep from someone grateful. And, and this is very important, good witches counseled against hate and told those who loved someone desperately that love was a two-way road and that sadly, sometimes we all have to walk it alone. But bad witches, bad witches, did that little bit more. We all know about a little bit more, don't we? We know that a bit of cake is fine, but too much becomes greed. We know when a teasing word is funny and another becomes a wound. We know how a little prod, a little harder, becomes a shove. You have to have felt that pull. That's something dark lurking in your heart. To go that bit further. And you, you've had to fight it. We've all had to fight it. And some of us have had to fight it very hard. But bad witches... They didn't fight it at all. Bad witches had no time for the sick and dying unless it was to gather infection and spread it to someone they disliked. Bad witches would curse your enemy and find a way to hurt even the most blameless soul. Bad witches lamed dogs and cut cats and poisoned wells. And bad witches could help you make someone believe they loved you even though they didn't. And nothing good ever comes from that. And just where the houses on Sherwood Road now stand, a bad witch once lived. Like everyone back then, she mainly ate soup, porridge and bread. Oat porridge with honey, wheat porridge with peas, bread with cheese, bread with butter, carrot soup, pea soup, soup made of turnips. And at the end of the winter, when all the old crops were eaten and the spring crops not yet grown, nettle soup or soup made with a stone in the pot to give everyone an idea of food even when all the food was gone. But in November, she ate meat. She made meat pies. She had roasts. She had stuffed cabbage. She made sausages and strung them to smoke and dry in her chimney with sides of bacon. And every October, a child or two would go missing. Just as it started to get dark earlier and before the grown-ups noticed that it was dark earlier and made the children come home earlier, children would play out as children do and the dark would fall early one cloudy, misty afternoon as dark does 
And the young ones would wait until they shivered because warm jackets and jumpers and cloaks were in short supply, as were shoes and boots. And then they'd go their separate ways, running home late now, through the orchard and the wood the quickest ways, trying to get back while their supper was still in the pot, trying to get home before the grown-ups would ask, where have you been? And one or two, three, one year, would suddenly trip a tree root that hadn't been there before, perhaps. Or they'd fall because something dropped right on their head Maybe a very large conquer. And then, then the bad witch would eat meat. Well, the grown ups would look and look and look for their child, and nothing was ever found, not so much as a button. But when the witch started cooking, everyone looked at each other. They thought, year after year, no, it can't be. But it was. And one year, they all looked at each other and they thought, this can't go on. They sent for the oldest good witch. She moved her cat and her dog, and all her many books of wisdom, and walked with her long legs and big boots and made her home right in the woods where Sherwood Road is now, just opposite the orchard. And she cured people when she could, and told people to wash their hands, and told them to get more exercise, and gave them honey drinks for their sore throats. And she waited. October came. The mist came. The dark rose early. The children ran home, going their separate ways. One of them tripped on a tree root that hadn't been there the day before, and quick as a flash, the bad witch jumped towards that child. Her bright blade flashed in her hand. But... Out of the leaves, the good witch rose and struck that blade with her good old broom. The knife went flying. The bad witch went flying too, running for her house. But the grown-ups were there. And they seized the bad witch. And things went badly for her. And went well for the people of that place from then on. The good witch stayed she made a little magic in her garden shed. She loved her cat and her dog. A man had married her, and this is important. He did not die from it. She taught everyone what she knew. But she wanted all the grown-ups and the children to remember so. Every October, in the dark of one October night, she dressed up in the bad witch's clothes, and if she saw a child, she threatened to put them in her oven and cook them. Because good doesn't just need to triumph over evil. Good has to remember what evil